boys and girls, nice to meet you here. Welcome to my class. Do you know what knowledge is a very practical for Siemens work? Navigation is the call for that officer. The important knowledge and skill for that officer are navigation, collision avoidance and watch keeping, maneuvering, and navigational rules. The ship owner pays significant attention in the understanding of this knowledge when they choose cadet for their fleet. In other words, the core of say operation of ship, in their opinion, is the same navigation. Well, this module is about the ship maneuvering and collision avoidance. And the topic of Unit 1 is the introduction of ship maneuverability and collision. Today we will learn lesson 1, basic outline of ship maneuverability and collision. First of all, we should know our teaching aim of this period. After we finish the lesson, we should be able to know the definition and contents of ship maneuverability and collision. The contents are consisting of four parts. The first one is the leading, the second one is the ship maneuverability, the third one is the creation avoidance, the last one is summary. After learning this unit, you are required to finish the following test. 1. What's the ship maneuverability? Number 2. What was well, what are used for different messages in correct 72 when two vessel made? Now I will show you a video. There's a question. What are used for different messages when two vessel made? Vessel not under command means a vessel which, through some exceptional circumstance, is unable to maneuver and therefore is unable to keep out of the way of another vessel. A vessel not under command shall exhibit two all-round red lights in a vertical line where they can best be seen. When making way through the water, side lights and a stern light shall be exhibited additionally. In daytime, a vessel not under command shall exhibit two balls or similar shapes in a vertical line where they can best be seen. Vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver means a vessel which, from the nature of her work, is restricted in her ability to maneuver and therefore is unable to keep out of the way of another vessel. A vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver, except a vessel engaged in mine clearance operations, shall exhibit three all-round lights in a vertical line where they can best be seen. The highest and lowest of these lights shall be red and the middle light shall be white. When making way to the water, a masthead light, side lights and a stern light shall be exhibited additionally. In daytime, it shall exhibit three shapes in a vertical line where they can best be seen. The highest and lowest of these shapes shall be balls and the middle one a diamond. When at anchor, the lights or shapes for an anchored vessel shall be exhibited additionally. When a power-driven vessel engaged in a towing operation, where its towing of the vessel and its tow are severely restricted in their ability to deviate from their course, it shall exhibit two masthead lights in a vertical line, side lights, a stern light, a towing light in a vertical line above the stern light, and three all-round lights in a vertical line where they can best be seen. The highest and lowest of these lights shall be red, and the middle light shall be white. When the length of the tow exceeds 200 meters, three masthead lights shall be exhibited in a vertical line. In daytime, it shall exhibit three shapes in a vertical line where they can best be seen. The highest and lowest of these shapes shall be balls, and the middle one a diamond. When the length of the tow exceeds 200 meters, a diamond shape shall be exhibited additionally where they can best be seen. A vessel engaged in dredging or underwater operations, when restricted in her ability to maneuver, shall exhibit three all-round lights in a vertical line where they can best be seen. The highest and lowest of these lights shall be red and the middle light shall be white. When making way through the water, a masthead light, side lights and a stern light shall be exhibited additionally. When an existing obstruction is spotted, two additional all-round red lights shall be exhibited in a vertical line to indicate the side on which the obstruction exists, and two additional all-round green lights shall be exhibited in a vertical line to indicate the side on which another vessel may pass. 
When at anchor, the lights, as previously stated, shall be exhibited instead of the lights for an anchored vessel. In daytime, it shall exhibit three shapes in a vertical line where they can best be seen. The highest and lowest of these shapes shall be balls and the middle one a diamond. When an existing obstruction is spotted, two additional balls shall be exhibited in a vertical line to indicate the side on which the obstruction exists and two additional diamonds shall be exhibited in a vertical line to indicate the side on which another vessel may pass. When at anchor, the shapes, as previously stated, shall be exhibited instead of the shapes for an anchored vessel. Whenever the size of a vessel engaged in diving operations makes it impracticable to exhibit all lights and shapes, it shall exhibit three all-round lights in a vertical line where they can best be seen. The highest and lowest of these lights shall be red and the middle light white. In daytime, the vessel shall exhibit a rigid replica of the international code flag, A, at not less than one meter in height. Measures shall be taken to ensure its all-round visibility. A vessel engaged in mine clearance operations shall, in addition to the lights for a power-driven vessel, or the lights or shapes for a vessel at anchor, exhibit three all-round green lights, or three balls indicating that it is dangerous for another vessel to approach within 1,000 meters of the mine clearance vessel. In this case, one of these lights, or shapes, shall be exhibited near the foremast head, and one at each end of the foreyard. Okay, that's all the movie. Have you got the answer of this video? Yes, yeah, so we can see that different lights and shapes are used for different messages from the video when two should meet. Well, now let's get into part two. Basic outline of shape maneuverability. It has two points, definition and its contents of shape maneuverability and two, significance of ship maneuverability. Number one, definition of ship maneuverability. Ship maneuverability is the ability of a ship to keep or change its state of motion under the control action. That is to say, to keep the stay at hand course with constant speed or to change the speed, the course and or the position of the ship according to the intention of the helmsman. Number one, inherent dynamic stability. Figure one, check of ship with different inherent dynamic stability. Also called straight-line stability. A ship is dynamic. Is uh, a ship is dynamically stable on a straight course if it can, after a small distance, soon settle on a new straight course without any control action. And see figure 1, the resultant deviation from the original course will depend on the degree of inherent stability of the ship and on the magnitude and duration of the distance. As shown in figure 1, for a dynamically unstable ship, it will ultimately enter into an arbitrary and steady training motion. Course keeping ability Figure 2, check of ship with a stable course keeping ability, also called directional stability. The course keeping ability is the ability of the stewardship to maintain its original course direction. See figure 2. A ship which has inherent dynamic stability can only maintain its original course direction under the control action. Also, a ship which is dynamically unstable on straight course can maintain its original course direction by frequently applying the control action. Number three, initial training course change ability. The initial training ability and course change ability are the ability of a ship to change its heading as a response to control action. A ship with a good initial training ability and all course change ability we quickly get into training or change its original course after the control action. Your checking ability is the ability of the stewardship to respond to counter rather action applied in a certain state of training. Number five, stopping ability. 
Third stopping ability is the ability of ship to stop with the engine stop, inertia stop, or engine full astern, clutch stop after a steady approach at full speed. Number two, significance of ship maneuverability. Ship maneuverability is a directly related to navigational safety and economy. For a ship maneuvering under severe environmental conditions and all in restricted water, marine disasters may occur if the ship has not adequate maneuverability. For example, for a ship with a poor inertia turning ability or poor turning ability, collision will obstacle in the waterway or with the bank of the narrow waterway uh, may, be, uh, may not be avoided, as shown in figure number 3. Figure 3 chair of shoe is a different initial turning ability. Okay, so much for part 2. Now let, let's get into part 3, basic outline of collision avoidance. Records show that worldwide there was a ship collision on the average of every five days and collisions are the most prominent of all marine accidents. For this reason, the importance of collision avoidance in navigational watchkeeping is fully recognized by the shipping industry. Many requirements of the seafarers training certification and watchkeeping code, STCW code, involve collision avoidance. The STCW code requires that the master of every ship ensure that watchkeeping arrangements are adequate for maintaining a safe navigational watch. That the officer in charge of a navigational watch should be the master's representative. He should be primarily responsible for all time for the safe navigation of the ship and for compliance with the international regulation for prevention collision at sea. 1972, the correct. When ships navigate in any navigable water, they must observe navigational rules, correct 72, which stand for the international regulation for preventing collision at sea. 1972, the rules, the rules regulate the collision avoidance when vessels are inside. For instance, a power drive vessel and the vessel engage in fishing meat in an open water. The power drive vessel must give way for the vessel engage in fishing. Different light, shape, and sound signal are used for different message. The traffic rules at sea are somewhat similar to traffic rules on shore. For instance, two vessels are in hand-on situation. Both vessels must alter their courses to their starboard side to avoid a collision. It's similar to the drive on the right side in city. Two vessels meet at night. The vessel themselves may decide to stand on and give regulation by citing colors of navigation light. When an official of the watch OOW of vessel side the green light, the observer of the ship decides to keep her course and speed. The other OOW side the red light. The OOW decides to order to cause or stop engine to avoid collision. That is similar to the signal light in city. Different local government may create navigational rules for their water. But those rules are not permitted to deviate from the code 72. All rules such as a hand-on situation, cross situation, navigation in restricted visibility, NTSS are required to be familiarized for good seamanship. Now it's time to summarize. We have learned two main points in this period. They are the definition and contents of ship maneuverability and the requirement of collision avoidance. That's all. This is all we have studied today. Thank you so much for today. See you next time.